Hey, hey, y'all, welcome back to the studio. I'm Irma Hamer, a large scale acrylic artist who was inspired by black girl magic, hip hop, and all things astrology. Well, today, what we are working on is more black girl magic. So, some of you all know that I'm working on a zodiac series where I'm painting all 12 of the astrological signs. So, right now, today, what we're going to be doing is putting some more details on Sagittarius. We might do some details on Capricorn, uh, the chair, like the throne that she sit it in. I want to build that out but I'm still like kind of taking a pause from her and figuring out where I want to go with that but we are definitely priming the canvas for Aquarius so I'm super geeked for another air sign and for the water bearer as a Gemini you know Aquarius and Gemini Aquimini love my girls so we're gonna be starting Aquarius too super happy that y'all here grab a seat and let's get started grab a seat okay pretty sure you guys are already seated but okay Welcome back everybody. Well, as you can see, the Sag has come a long way. We are now getting started on her quill, which I googled. <laughs> and uh, pretty much that's the holster that's holding all of her arrows. I'll break down the colors that I'm using a little bit later but for now I wanted to get started on these feathers and I was super inspired by um, actually a birthday party that I went to for my friend Charlie she is an Aquarius and she's super amazing because she had um, falconeers come to her party so they had these owls and I was actually able to hold one it was so dope just chilling, living your best life. He blinked one eye. <laughs> Pretty sure she just winked at me. This is the feather that really caught my eye and I'm actually not even sure what bird this is from, but I loved how on one side it was this dark, uh, like burnt umber color and then on the other side it was lighter. In addition to that, it had these really cool stripes. So that's what I was trying to create for the arrow that the Sag is holding here. The colors that I used for the feathers were this yellow okra as well as this burnt umber. In addition to the yellow okra, I added a little bit of pyro orange and so that was giving me a lighter, warmer effect on the light side of the feather and really um, created some contrast. Once I got those base layers set, I started to add the pattern to the feathers and I actually had my phone up during this time so that I could really reference the picture that I showed you all because I really like the patterns that was in this feather. Honey, the sun started to set. It started to get dark. It took a while to create the effect that I really wanted, but uh, it was definitely worth it in the end. But yeah, we were just hanging out in the studio, vibing, listening to some music in my happy place. She definitely wouldn't be an AO Sag without some bamboo earrings. Bag dudes, where were you? When all the dogs needed help, lawyers in the Throwing in those hip hop influences for you, girl. I mean, she has brows on fleek, lashes on fleek. I am here for sis. All right, so what we got going on here um, is we already set our base layer, which is this yellow okra. And then on top of that, we're putting a lot of layers of this uh, burnt umber. And the reason why the left is darker is because there's a lot more direct sun that's behind her. So the front of this earring is gonna be silhouetted compared to the other one that is shaded by her hair.
Now from here, every shade is gonna be lighter than the next. So now I'm going in with this Hansa yellow, what Hansa, okay. <laughs> Hands of yellow opaque, I think actually is the name of the color, and a little bit of dab of that yellow okra, mixing those together, and now we're it. We're adding in some of those medium tones. Even lighter still. So now we're gonna go in with the Hansa yellow light and mixing that with a dash of titanium white. Ooh, you know she about to snap when you bring out the baby brush. Look at the little baby brush. <laughs> okay, so with this one, now we are just using pure titanium white. We really want it to shine so we can have this metallic gold-like effect. And uh, when it comes down to metals, that's how you really gonna make something pop with that contrast by having those really light whites. Super happy how this turned out. Uh, there's still a little bit more to go on Sag, like just cleaning up the feathers a bit, really building out the quill. But uh, yeah, she's definitely coming along. So we're gonna be moving on to our next piece of the day. Had to give the baby some love. They were looking a little dry over here. Uh, despite everything that's going on in the world and this pandemic, um, the sun has been shining and it actually has been beautiful out here in Seattle. These little babies got some new growth, so I'm really happy to see that. Um, I hope y'all are well during this time. Just sending you some health and happiness, sending some good vibes your way. Um, I know there's a whole lot going on. And so right now, personally, I'm just focusing my energy towards creating and making as much content and as many paintings as I can to keep my mind off um, off a, a lot of the pain that's going on but i hope you all are well we got a new baby in the studio this little one right here she's doing fantastic so let's get started on capricorn if you saw last week's video, then you remember how I built out this original throne that the Snow Queen Capricorn is gonna be sitting on. Uh, but looking at it, I like it, but I wanna make it bigger. I really want it to stand out so you can see the chalk lines where I started to outline how much bigger the throne is gonna be. So take a look. So what's crazy y'all is that I've already done so much more since I recorded this video. So I'm just looking at it like, ah, I can't wait to show y'all the next phase and how she looks because it's ridiculous. Okay, feeling super proud of myself because I actually did get the gesso set for Aquarius. So this is how I start the process for stapling them to the wall. Yep, it's always this awkward and ridiculous. <laughs> but that's what happens when these canvases are so huge and I'm doing it by myself, but I always make it work. You know, we make a do what it do. I count six shots. I get it taped off so that I can have a nice clean edge. And I actually did um, a video in the past showing how I did this entire process. So I'm not gonna put you all through that again. But just as a note, when I do hang it up, it's really, it has so many wrinkles in it. Um, but once I put the gesso on it, all those wrinkles are gone because the gesso pulls it really nice and tight. And that's what I love. Mm, 
my paint caddy is an absolute mess. Yeah, so I actually used this surface to pour the gesso on. So I'm gonna get that all cleaned up so that we can start to pour the primer. I already have my gesso pre-mixed. So what I do is add about 50% water, 50% gesso. Not really sure if those are the correct proportions, but I'm actually gonna put a link in the description to my previous video where I actually break down all the details of how I mix my gesso in the priming process for my canvases. So the first layer is the diluted gesso, and then I come back with the second layer that is a lot more potent and top it off. So y'all, we got the gesso set for Aquarius. As you can see, it is a disaster behind me. The studio is a work in progress. If you missed my first video, the art studio makeover part one, you should definitely check that out. I'm working on getting it all together so that I can have a final reveal of my art studio once everything looks all nice and clean. But for now, Andy is here helping me out, being a distraction, but uh, he's gonna be building me some custom storage. So stay tuned for the next video because I'm gonna include some of that and kind of show you all the process of how the studio was coming along. Thank you so much for joining me today. And remember, if you liked it, like it, and I'll see you next time. I think the ash is real, y'all. <laughs> Stay hydrated, friends. Stay hydrated.